The governor of River State, Nyesam Wike, has been honoured by the Equerry Kingdom in Port Hackett, the River State capital. At a reception attended by some prominent Nigerians, the lead cultural association of the Equerry people explained that this accolade comes on the recognition of what they describe as his sterling performance in the administration of the state. This gathering is history in the making for the people of Ikwere Kingdom in River State as they converge to honor their son, Governor Yeson Wike. The attendees have come from within and outside of River State as past and serving governors, members of the National and State Assembly, as well as traditional rulers were all present to felicitate with the governor. Applauding the governor for what they describe as his exemplary leadership style, the chairman of the occasion spoke on why he's been bestowed with a chieftaincy title. And we have seen the several good works of our governor, and we are satisfied that he has performed superlatively very well and continues to so perform. So this honor today is not misplaced. The sterling qualities for which the governor is being honored by his people is also being experienced by other people outside the Equerry Kingdom. Continue to hold God, continue to trust God. Distractions will come. Don't shake. Once you are with God, that's no shaking. The other thing is, Look at the people. Look at the people. Not the high table. Because of his capacity and because of his disabilized ways and life that he has lived in River State. Because if you want to be a leader, you must have enormous capacity. Now it's time to take the title of DK Oha of Equerry. I will never abandon anybody who has supported me one way or the other, I will never abandon that. I will not do that. I will not abandon people who during the rainy season, they gave me umbrella. I will not do that. I will not abandon people who even the dry season, hot period, they put their condition for me. I will never abandon them. As the accolades flow for the River State Governor, many ask that he ensures that the state becomes a place of pride again. It's time now for sports news on the news at 10 with Ayotunde Balogun. Many thanks, Gimba. We start now with football in the English Premier League. The Red Devils Manchester United this evening delivered neighbours Manchester City another damaging blow to their title defence as they clinched a memorable 179th derby victory at the Etihad Stadium. United were cruising after Marcus Rashford's penalty and Anthony Martial's near-post strike had them two up inside an hour. That's inside half an hour. But the late Nicolas Otamendi header sparked a thrilling finish with David De Gea, the United goalkeeper, saving well from Riyad Mahrez before a mad goal-mouth scramble in injury time, thus capping a beautiful week for Manchester United where they had earlier beaten Tottenham Hotspur in midweek at Old Trafford coached by Jose Mourinho. Everton caretaker manager Duncan Ferguson has made an instant impact on the pitch and a spectacular one off it as he started his reign with a vital 3-1 victory over Chelsea at Goodison Park, uh, Goodison Park rather, to the delight of the Evertonians. Now, two classy strikes by Harry Kane and a sensational solo goal by Song Hyung Min delivered Tottenham Hotspur a 5-0 thrashing of Burnley the third straight Premier League defeat for the visitors. The league leaders Liverpool FC remain unbeaten this season as they eased to a 3-0 win against FC Bournemouth, who lost Nathan Ake and Callum Wilson to injury. Now, the world football governing body FIFA has confirmed that Qatar's Education City Stadium will not host games during the Club World Cup this month after the official opening of the venue was postponed until early 2020. FIFA said the construction of the stadium was complete and the venue was operational, but the necessary certification processes took longer than expected and the stadium was unable to host test events at full capacity prior to the tournament. The Education City Stadium was due to host three games in the December the 11th to the 21st event, including a semi-final involving European champions Liverpool on December the 18th, as well as the third-place playoff 
and the final. The 45,416 capacity Halifa International Stadium, the home of Qatar's national team, will now host those games. And that's sports news. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun Gimba. Over to you for the wrap. On a rather sad note, popular German Pentecostal evangelist Reinhard Bonke has died at the age of 79. His wife, Annie, announced this in a statement posted on the Bonke's verified Facebook page today. She wrote, it is with sorrow that the Bonke family would like to announce the passing of our beloved husband, father and grandfather, evangelist Reinhard Bonke. He passed away peacefully surrounded by his family on December the 7th, 2019. Bonke was widely known for his gospel missions throughout African countries, including Nigeria and South Africa since the late 1960s. In 2017, Bonke held what he termed his farewell gospel crusade, held at an open ground at the Lagos-Ugun border, southwest of Nigeria. A Chinese-American researcher convicted of spying in Iran has been freed in an exchange for the release of an Iranian scientist held by the United States. Ziyu Wang was arrested in Iran in 2016 for collaborating with foreign governments. Masoud Soleimani, a stern cell expert, was arrested at a Chicago airport last year. He was accused of violating trade sanctions by trying to export biological materials to Iran. And the main news again, the DSS today broke its silence on its invasion of the federal high court premises in Abuja yesterday. The agency says that the scuffle in the court was stage managed by Shoura supporters, just as the National Human Rights Commission called for the arrests and prosecution of the officers involved. And that has been it on the news at 10 tonight. I want to thank you so much indeed for watching. On behalf of all of us here, have a splendid night rest and good night.